So let's update you real fast, kind of a recap of the things that this made this one viral video about late November of last year. It was my very first big video and it was mainly over the things that just completely agitated me about Windows 10. Now I'm not going to go really in depth here. I'm going to just go ahead and list off what those were because you've probably already watched that video. And there are Windows Update, Windows Store, Notification Bar, Security Center, Safe Mode Removal on Boot, uh, Security, Biannual System Updates, and also the File Sharing. I just didn't care for any of these things and they still drive me crazy because with my work, obviously, I still have to get on Windows machines and um, also kind of just keep keep up with that skill because honestly most of the world still runs on windows however that's kind of changing and uh, in this video i wanted to lay out some of the things that i see happening and a lot of people just don't realize so um and then you know as i go back and forth between linux and windows I also kind of wanted to add to that list of things because there's eight more things I just left out of that video that I just want to go ahead and list out as well. Just things that just irritate me to no end. So with that, let's go ahead and jump in and get going on this video. So let's first talk about the market share. What's it like and those types of things. Now, Windows, uh, I'm going to go ahead and probably like right up in this corner, put a little graphic. Um, this is kind of interesting. So Windows has had like this stranglehold on the desktop market and it still does. I'm no, I'm not diminishing that by any means by bringing this up, but uh, it's really interesting to see its market share has slowly declined. Um, you see Mac OS tick up a couple percents over the past couple years. And one thing you see down there is Linux and everyone's like, well, it only has 2% market share. Well, one thing that most people don't realize about Linux is it's built for security. It's built for privacy. Instead of just reporting everything it does, all the things on the websites, hey, I'm using Linux, it, a lot of distributions don't do that. And some are built specifically for that purpose, for an, an anonymity and also just uh, security and privacy because people don't want all that information exposed. So with that, um, you kind of see the 2% Linux share, but you also see this giant rise of the other uh, on this graph. And what that is, is that's, I think, a lot of security-based distributions. And that could be FreeBSD, that could be Linux. It could be a variety of different things, but you see a giant rise in the last couple of years. And it's just really important to note that back in 2010, you know, everyone was using Windows 7, which I loved Windows 7. It was, it was the perfect operating system for me at the time. Um, Everything worked, especially coming from the Vista days where, you know, I was one of the very early doctors of Vista and everyone shares that nightmare. It got patched and, you know, after about two or three giant service patches, Vista became workable. But Windows 7 was really uh, the very first good product Microsoft released in a while and it was very solid. I don't think anybody can dispute that, um, especially considering all the other stuff that they've done over the years. Uh, but since then, Windows 8 and Windows 10 have been launched and you see this slow decline in, in Windows market share. It's not going away anytime soon. I'm not saying, hey, oh my God, next year Windows is going to lose its market share. No, I'm not. But you need to be aware in 10 years, yeah, it could be knocked off as the king of what everyone uses as things gradually go away from traditional applications that are OS agnostic. When that happens, people use web pages. What happens when that happens? Uh, you can use any operating system you want. It doesn't matter if it's FreeBSD, Linux, OS X. Uh, it could be anything. It could be your phone. It doesn't matter. And uh, that's where Windows is kind of losing some of that, you know, hey, you have to use me kind of thing. Now, I did make a video, and I'll go ahead and link it up there, about why people still need to use Windows. I'm not saying that it's just completely going to go away, but it may, in 10 years, lose a lot of market share. You may see a lot of these traditionally 
proprietary pieces of software that are exclusive to Windows, it may lose a lot of those exclusivities just because of this fact. And I wanted to bring that up uh, before I launch into this next segment. So let's get into eight more reasons why I stopped using Windows. So I already listed off the eight reasons on my prior video and just uh, recapped it at the beginning here. But there's more reasons why as going back to Windows and dealing with it through business. So the very first thing I noticed is telemetry, which even though I know there's going to be a lot of people that are like, hey, privacy isn't really important to me. I don't care about privacy. I get that. I, and honestly, I'm kind of in that bank too. Heck, I know a lot of the Linux users when I've made those types of videos that bash me for using like Google Chrome. But telemetry is more than just privacy invasion. It's one, it's sucking resources. I didn't even know really telemetry existed until I was using my computer and then it just went to complete max out on my CPU usage because it was compiling telemetry and getting that package to send off to Microsoft. And it was, I was on my computer. I noticed, I visibly noticed the slowdown. Now, obviously, I'm a little more adept to how my computer is supposed to react than most users, but still, I shouldn't notice that. And that alone says, what in the heck is this thing doing? If How much is it reporting? Because it's a, just a boatload of stuff that it's collecting on people. It's not just a little bit of an invasion of privacy. It is basically just using it. They shouldn't even charge for Windows 10. And in fact, they, they really haven't in many instances. And they subsidize that cost by this pretty much evil package with telemetry. I mean, uh, it literally slows down computers by being enabled. So horrible. Um, and, and before I go further into reason number two, uh, check out my deep load script. If you are running Windows 10, get rid of telemetry. There's no reason for that to be enabled. I understand you want to stick with Windows and that is okay, but definitely disable telemetry. Deep bloat your Windows 10. You will have a far better experience than what you're experiencing today. Number two, the Edge browser and Internet Explorer. Uh, you know, there's still some places where you have to pop up Internet Explorer to check out like this old legacy application. Most of them have gone away, but there's still a couple out there that this is not the case. Some courts I know I have to deal with um, use some type of e-filing where I'm constantly hacking around someone's Internet Explorer to get that to work or uh, the whatnot. Now, Edge itself, uh, you know, everyone, no, nobody really uses it. And their Microsoft just came out and said, hey, we're getting rid of it. We're going to go to a Chromium based system, which I'm fine with. That's cool. Nobody really uses Edge, so I don't really care. Um, but these things, Edge and uh, Internet Explorer, just horrible inventions, horrible to deal with, things that just have always irritated me. There have never been a good version of either, and uh, they suck. It, it's, just, it's just as simple as that. There's better alternatives, whether it's Firefox, Brave, uh, Chrome, Chromium. You pick your poison. All of them far outperform the Microsoft equivalent. Third one, networking and sharing center. I already talked about file sharing in my prior video, but I wanted to expand on the networking sharing center. Um, home groups in particular, home groups or work groups, both horrible implementations by Microsoft. Even when implemented correctly, they don't work for crap. Now, uh, a lot of, you know, big advocates or Microsoft fanboys might come say, well, you need to do the enterprise version and do an active directory and put a domain on there and it'll work great. Yeah. Yeah, it will. But do you think home users have a couple thousand dollars laying around to spin up a server and put that in their closet? Come on. You got to give me this one. Home groups, horrible, just horrible. Work groups, not much better. I mean, it's a little bit better, I guess, but home groups I've set up multiple times got them working, everything was synced, they should have just kept and gelled together in the home network, but uh, never did. You know, a lot of times they'd work for a couple of weeks and then something would happen or one system would be on a different Windows version 
Windows 10 version and it would be a problem. Um, so all of them were on Windows 10, but it still have issues with home group. So uh, just a horrible, horrible deal with that. And the actual networking profiles, I'm not a big fan of either, you know, the private, public and uh, business. One, the differentiate, how, how they differentiate between them all, um, just, a really crappy deal and also some people mistake and put public in a private setting and then uh, you almost have to do a reg edit to undo that uh, in Windows 7 it was a lot easier to take it off of that public and put it back to private to where you could open up sharing and other things um, but the networking and sharing center man it's just a huge letdown there's a lot of opportunity there for Microsoft to improve and all they've done is made it worse over the past 10 years Number four, Cortana. Uh, yeah, do I really need to explain this one? <laughs> a voice assistant that's in your computer that, uh, yeah, uh, it's just a bloated mess and disable that as soon as you can through your local GPO and or a reg edit because uh, that is just a huge waste of resources um there might be some accessibility things let's say you're you're crippled and you can't type very well maybe but even then there's better third-party alternatives like dragon naturally speaking has a better uh interface and also understands users a lot better uh should you you know let's say you break your arm or something like that you might be using a lot of voice activated commands even then cortana is lacking in almost every way so Cortana, a bloated mess that I don't even know what uh, she or it does. It's just a, a horrible, horrible product that they've implemented that just also is a resource hog. Number five, suggested apps. Um, wow, this one's a bad one. So this one, it just pulls up in your, your start menu and says, hey, I noticed you've been using Office 365 and a lot of business apps. Would you like to put Candy Crush on your system? It'll suggest the app in your start menu. <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, yeah, Microsoft, man. I know this is people are paying you a lot of money, but this was just a blatant sellout move. Don't do that. That's just a horrible thing. I mean, I already get that you're already bloating it up on the install with all these crap apps, but you don't need to suggest crap apps to me. Like, I'm going to be like, oh, okay. I'm sure there's like grandma out there, someone that does click on it, but um, that doesn't make it right. Uh, not selling out 90% of your, your base to appease or maybe get that 10% that actually clicks on it. It's not worth the money that you're making off of it. Get rid of suggested apps. It's just bad. So number six, the bloated installation. So I booted, actually went almost a full month in my Linux install and went back into Windows to play some like VR and some other things. Um, but I noticed that, man, it is just so bloated and my system doesn't run nearly as well in Windows. Um, and that's mainly just because of how big the the footprint is for windows windows 10 is basically windows 7 with all these layers on top they haven't done much to optimize that it is not a slimmer install it is not uh, uh it's resource heavy it just really is I, there's no other way to put it it just your system's going to run slower with this installed compared to a vanilla windows 7 or even earlier windows xp uh install and uh it's a lot heavier it's not just a little heavier so i noticed that almost immediately coming from that and moving back in i was like yeah look at all these resources that i had free and now windows is just kind of hogging all these up i already kind of knew that going into this but it still needs to be said number seven horrible uh, package management so when it comes to applications and installing and how you put stuff on your system it is just bad. You have to go out to some website, any website really. It could be a good website, it could be a bad website. Just download that executable, run it, install it into the registry, have it embedded throughout your whole system, and then go. I mean, this is just a horrible design altogether. And this goes all the way back from, you know, the 3.11 days. They really haven't really changed much in the way of package management. Um, they need to get rid of this somehow and they're trying with like the windows store which is just a disaster 
Um, but I, I don't know how you fix this problem, but it's a gripe nonetheless. I, I don't have any good ideas on this one because I've already knocked the Windows Store, but at the same time, I see the problem with all the viruses coming from all these untrusted executables. But it still needs to be said. It's bad package management, but there's really no good solution. So I wish I had a good offer, a good solution. If someone from Microsoft watched that, this video and says, hey, yeah, I got nothing. Scrap the entire operating system and start from scratch and actually build something that's a lot better than what you have? I, I don't know. I mean, it's just the package management kind of comes from that base, that foundation. And Windows has, um, you know, never evolved past how it was back from the olden days. They're still doing it like they did in the olden days because that's just how it is. So number eight and the final one, and I actually should have probably brought this up on my original video and I'm kind of surprised it didn't make my first top eight. And that is viruses and antivirus. <laughs> oh man, um, where to begin on this one? There's so many viruses for Windows. There just is. It is the you know everyone's going to say, well, there no one's going to target something with 10% market share when they can go for the big dog at 80% market share. I get it, and I'm not saying that isn't true because it is true. But what I am saying is uh, the viruses are prevalent on Microsoft Windows and. They're bad. There's some really nasty ones out there and I've had to deal with over the years. I could have many horror stories, stories I could sh or share with you guys, but uh, it is not a good situation in that regard and you have to have some type of antivirus, which honestly the antivirus doesn't do much good. It does do some, um, but a lot of times it just warns you when you go ahead and run and then make the exception and launch into whatever executable your user is going to use. So, and it'll install that virus and then scream at that person saying, Hey, uh, you've installed a virus. And a lot of times the virus will go ahead and embed itself and even maybe disable that antivirus. But usually, uh, the user will know they did something wrong and notify a professional to come clean it up. But, it's still a huge problem <laughs> and one of the big reasons why I don't use Windows anymore is the viruses and antiviruses. Not having to deal with it, not having to worry about it. Hey, that's awesome. And I know the rebuttal of this one already. Don't go to an untrusted site. I get it. But guess what? Your grandma is going to do it anyway. She's going to want that coupon printer that goes ahead and prints out all those lovely coupons and adds five different toolbars to her browser of choice, which is probably Internet Explorer. But that's my eight reasons why I stopped using it or eight more reasons why I stopped using Windows 10. Um, and, you know, if you're interested in maybe switching or trying something different, um, I highly encourage you check out my 30 day playlist. I went ahead and kind of documented my first 30 days in Linux and uh, said all my gripes and there was a lot of gripes and I would say those first 30 days were some of the most difficult because you're learning something completely new from what you're used to in Windows and you will not be more efficient than you are in Windows out of the gate because it fundamentally works differently whether you choose Mac whether you choose Linux whether you choose something different um, that's all up to you if you're ask me hey if i want to try you know what your uh, you know operating system other than windows you'd recommend i'd say linux mint is the most windows user friendly so try it out of the gate and if you have problems um i went ahead and created a subreddit to help windows users kind of adjust to linux it's called chris titus tech on reddit so check it out comment check check the description below and you'll see the link for it so that's it for today's video, guys. I know this ran a little long, but uh, it's something I wanted to re-update this video. A lot of users are going, hey, how's that Linux experience going? Or they're seeing I'm popping up all these Linux videos. Um, it's going really well. I'm personally really enjoying it, and I'm really looking forward to the future. And I'm going to keep trying to make content for Windows users that are transitioning to Linux because it is a fantastic operating system. But with that said, I'll see you in the next video.